So back in like November or December of last year, I started pre-writing the third Spider-Man movie. I had the villain picked out, I had the name picked out, and I was ready to go through it. I even had it up on my channel as a video for a little while, but I stopped writing it and I put the video in private. If you'd like to see the original concept of this, um, let me know down in the comments and I'll take the video out of private. So about two or three weeks ago, I put on my Instagram that I was going to start writing it again and that I had the two villains picked out and that I was ready to go into writing it and I would like to share it with my YouTube channel because I'm doing more updates on my Instagram now. So this is only what I have so far, so I hope you guys really do enjoy it. I'm also going to be putting some other YouTubers videos in the description. They are pre-writing videos. It's going to be in the description. There are some small channels, so please support them as much as possible. Definitely check out Lewis Films pre-writing Spider-Man 3. That was a really good video. If you are a MCU Spider-Man fan, I feel like you will love that video. It will also be in the description. So before we get going officially, I have to say that Spider-Man Home Run is a fan-made story dedicated to the third Spider-Man film. All rights and characters go to Walt Disney Studios and Columbia Pictures. Spoilers in case any of this is true, but I doubt it. Alright, my nose is kind of stuffy guys, so work with me. We open with the Sony logo as audio from the last film plays in the background. Spider-Man attacked me for some reason, says Quentin Beck. The Marvel logo opens up with Quentin Beck shouting, Spider-Man's name is Peter Parker. We then cut to J. Jonah Jameson saying basically what he said in the extra far from home clips, saying that Spider-Man is a hormonal teenager from Queens with technology that he has no right to possess. Also scolding Spider-Man by saying, you think you're some kind of hero? Well, let me tell you, kid, you're no hero. The screens in Times Square fill with the image of Peter's face. Jonah gets a message in his earpiece saying, This just in, folks. There's a brownie to bring Spider-Man in. Dead or alive. The cops on the streets tell Spider-Man to freeze as they aim their guns at him while MJ tells him to run. Peter, panicking, swings home to Aunt May telling her to call Happy to pick up her, Ned, and MJ because it's not safe here. May asks Peter what is he going to do. Peter responds by telling her he'll worry about it later and that she needs to leave, and he'll handle whatever comes on his own. May tells Peter that she's not going to sit around and let her nephew die. Peter responds by telling her to listen to him. May forces him to listen, saying, I don't want a repeat of what happened to Ben to happen to you, saying, this isn't Coney Island or London, this is serious. Peter shouts back at May, saying, I went off planet to fight in a war and I died. I get brought back to fight in another war and I just wanted a break, and I didn't even get that because Fury needed my help. I didn't ask to be Spider-Man, I just didn't want to let Mr. Stark down. Peter slams down on the couch beginning to tear up, telling May he's sorry for shouting. May smiles back at him saying it's us against the world kiddo. We then cut to Africa meeting our two villains of the film. A car drives down a long road in the middle of the jungle meeting a house. A man hops out revealing himself to be Mac Gargan. In case you didn't know, he was in Spider-Man Homecoming. Mac walks to the door knocking as a man opens it asking how did he find this place. The man is Sergei Kravenov, an expert retired hunter who found Wakanda and most of his weapons are made out of vibranium. Mac tells Craven that he just wants to talk. As Craven goes to shut the door, Mac kicks it open, noticing that Craven has a daughter on her deathbed. Craven pulls out an electrical machete, holding it to his neck, asking him what he wants. Mac says that he wants him to find someone pointing a gun at his daughter on her deathbed, saying, I know it's an offer that you cannot refuse. We didn't come back to New York. Peter and Ned, looking down from Peter's apartment, notices that there are people rioting and throwing eggs at Aunt May's car, while Happy tries to calm them down. Ned says he's sorry for bailing on Peter in London and maybe if he was the guy in the chair this wouldn't have happened. Peter says it's alright, turning around seeing MJ behind him. Ned, now being the third wheel, says I'm gonna walk away now, slowly walking away. MJ hugs Peter tightly, gripping him like she doesn't want to let go. She asks Peter what is he going to do. Peter responds by saying, I don't know. I thought being Spider-Man was the best part of my life, but after all this, I don't know if I want this anymore. MJ holds his hand saying, whatever happens, I'll always be here for you. Peter lays his head on her shoulder as we cut to Peter packing his suits. Peter looks at a picture of him and Tony Stark stuffing his suits in the bag. Peter drags the bag in the living room as Aunt May asks him if he's sure about his decision. Peter, hesitating at first, says, I'm sure. Peter takes a personal car to the Avengers facility where they're rebuilding after the events of Avengers Endgame. Peter takes the bag, dropping it down, walking away from it with the costume halfway out. We then cut to Craven and Mac on a plane as Craven looks at pictures of Peter. Craven asks him what's his problem with this kid. Mac responds by saying he needed money for a deal a few years ago to pay for his daughter's treatment. Spider-Man completely ruined that deal and she died before I got out of prison. My personal beef is not with Stark or the Avengers, it's with Spider-Man, and I'm gonna make him suffer. Craven responds by saying I'm not killing a kid. Mac responds by saying if you don't want to help me, I'll pull the plug on your daughter. You decide. Craven looks at his daughter in the back of the plane and then a picture of Peter Parker. Okay, so I wrote the script for this video a couple of days ago. 
However, I've been adding to Spider-Man Home Run since then, and please work with me with this one. I'm going completely off of memory and what I remember writing. We then cut back to New York. It's been a couple of days later of the police department going through Peter Parker's apartment, but they don't find anything. This is where we get a cameo scene from Captain Stacy saying that he's sorry to, you know, whatever damage they may have caused in their lives. Walking out as a sign of relief just comes over Peter. And Aunt May says that she's going to call Happy to bring his suit back. And Peter says that he doesn't want it back. He just wants to be a kid and just wants to live a life. We didn't cut two scenes of him and Ned rebuilding the Death Star and him and MJ going on dates. And that's kind of all I remember. And that's where I'm going to end it for now. So if you want to see a part two to this video, just let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to hear me break down my own Spider-Man fan-made series, seasons one through five, let me know down in the comments below because I really need the content for next week and the following weeks to come. So with that, I appreciate you guys for watching this video. As always, it would really mean a lot to me if you would leave a like and subscribe. Help the channel grow. Please support as many small accounts as you can. Also, be sure to watch all of the other videos that are in the descriptions. It would really mean a lot to me and it would really mean a lot to them. Like and subscribe to them as well. Support them as much as possible. So with that, I'm going to leave it there for now. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments or on my Instagram. So with that, this has been the Web Warrior signing off.